In this video, we're going to go through six examples where we're given six different tables and we have to identify whether it's linear equation or if it's a quadratic equation or if it's an exponential equation. We're going to be working with these three formulas right here. We're also going to be talking about the method of finite differences. So see if you can do some of these on your own. We'll go through all six together. Let's dive into the first example. You can see here that the x values are consecutive, meaning one after another like that. And when they're like that, we can use a technique called method of finite differences with the y coordinates. And the way we do this is we subtract negative 3 minus negative 5, which is 2, negative 1 minus negative 3, which is 2, 1 minus negative 1 is 2, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Now you can do it where you subtract the number on the right minus the one on the left, or you can do it the one on the left minus the one on the right. The key thing is that you want to be consistent. So if you're doing left minus right, you do that all the way down. Or if you do right minus left, you do that all the way down. If you get the same number on the first time that you subtract, okay, that tells you that it's a first degree equation. If you had to subtract a second time to get the same number, a constant, then that tells you it's a second degree polynomial equation. And then if you had to do it a third time, it would be a third degree, like a cubic equation, etc. So that's one way to identify whether it's a linear quadratic, but as far as an exponential function goes, you could keep doing that method of finite differences forever, and it will never give you that constant, okay, like you're getting with the first degree, second degree, third degree uh, polynomial equations. What you're looking for here is where you're going to actually be multiplying by the same quantity to get to the next y value. So we'll see some examples like that, but for this one, since the first time we subtracted, we got a constant, the same number each time. That tells us that it's linear, and remember, linear is the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. So when you think about this, you can think, okay, I'm going up by 2 each time. Every time the uh, y's go up by 2, the x's go up by 1. And remember, the slope is the change in y over the change in x. So this is a positive 2 over a positive 1, which is 2. So that's going to be y equals the slope, which is 2x plus b. Now the b here is our y-intercept. This is where it crosses the y-axis. That's this point right here, because when you think about 0, negative 3, you're going 0 left or right on the x-axis. You're just going down 3, and so that's going to give us a b value of negative 3. Now I like to kind of check my answer, so you might want to do the same thing as maybe plug in a point. For example, let's say if I put in 3 for x, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 is 3, and you can see it matches. So sometimes I like to just check to make sure I'm on the right track. Let's look at another example. Okay, for example number 2, let's take a look at the method of finite differences and see if this is a first degree, second degree, third degree, like that. So if I do the right minus the left, negative 3 minus 0, I get negative 3. Negative 4 minus negative 3 is like negative 4 plus 3, so that's negative 1. And negative 3 minus negative 4 is like negative 3 plus 4. So that's positive 1, and 0 minus negative 3 is like 0 plus 3, which gives us positive 3. Now you can see we're not getting the same number the first time that we subtracted, so it's not a first degree equation. Let's try subtracting again. So I'm going to do negative 1 minus negative 3, that's like negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. 1 minus negative 1 is like 1 plus 1, that's 2, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So you can see we're getting 2, 2, 2, 2. Now it doesn't really matter the number, whether it's 5, 5, 5, 5, or 9, 9, 9, 9, or 12, 12, right? It's the fact that the second time that we subtracted, we're getting the same number. So that tells us it's a second degree equation. It's a quadratic equation in this form. Now when we look at the table, there's a couple different ways of doing this. One way is we can make a system of equations and solve for a, b, and c. Another way to do it is we can look at what we call the zeros. Now what are the zeros? The zeros are these points right here. And if you were to graph this, you would see that the quadratic, which is just a parabola shape, is going to cross the x-axis at negative 1, see that's where the y value is 0, and at positive 3. That's also where the y value is 0. So what we can do is we can make use of what's called the intercept form. Intercept form is this form here, y equals a times x minus p times x minus q, where p and q are the x-intercepts, or the zeros. So let's go ahead and work with this one. We have y equals a, x minus negative 1 is x plus 1, x minus 3, okay, is our other factor. 
Now, how do we figure out what A is? Well, we could pick another point. For example, maybe let's say this point here is 0, negative 3. I'll put negative 3 in for Y. I'll put 0 in for the X variable. And we can solve for this A. A is like the stretch or shrink or reflect of the parabola. So this comes out to negative 3 equals A times 1 times negative 3. So you can see we're getting negative 3 equals negative 3 A. So A must equal 1. So if we divide by negative 3, you can see A is equal to 1. So let's put this 1 back in right here. Okay, so this comes out to Y equals 1 times X plus 1 times X minus 3. And now I'm just going to multiply this out. So, of course, 1 times anything is itself. So I'm just going to multiply X times X, which is X squared. X times negative 3 is a negative 3X. 1 times x is x, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And again, like I said, 1 times anything is itself. Let's combine like terms here, and we're getting y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. And that's the equation of our quadratic, given this table. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for number 3 now, let's take a look at this pattern. When I look at this, I can do the method of finite differences like we did in the first and second example. But what I notice here is it looks like I'm multiplying by, well, it actually looks like I'm dividing by 3, right? 6 divided by 3 is 2, 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds, 54 divided by 3 is 18. Dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, 1 third. So this, when you're multiplying by the same number each time to get to the next y value, next y value, next y value, that tells you that it's an exponential equation, and this b value, this base, is what we're multiplying by, in this case, the one-third. So what we have is y equals a times one-third to the x power. Now, how do we solve for this a? Well, the a is the y-intercept. It's where it crosses the y-axis. And when you're crossing the y-axis, like if this is a graph like this, uh, you can see it's crossing at the y-axis when x is zero. So when x is zero, y is equal to two, and so that means our a value is two. So y equals two times one-third to the x power, and you've got it. Now, you might want to check, maybe put in some other values, like say, for example, one. One-third to the first is one-third, and one-third times two is two-thirds. That makes sense, right? So let's try another example. Okay, before we dive into the last three examples, which I'd like for you to try to practice on your own, and by the way, for number four, five, and six, I mix them up. You know, it's not the same order that I did the first three, like linear, quadratic, exponential. I kind of mixed them up, so this way you can kind of test yourself to make sure you understand. But what I wanted to tell you is if you're, like the way that I explain things, and you'd like to go deeper and learn more about Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 or College Algebra, I put a link in the video um, description box below. So go ahead and check out those video courses that I have for sale. I take you step by step through a typical Algebra 1 class or a typical Algebra 2 class with lots of examples, lots of explanation of the uh, concepts. So check those out if you're learning those courses or want to review those courses. But let's dive into number four now. So what would you do on this one? Pause the video and see if you can do it. If I was going to do it, I would do that method of finite dis, uh, differences first. So I do 4 minus 11 is negative 7, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, 2 minus 1 is 1, and 7 minus 2 is 5. I didn't get the same number on that first time I subtracted, so I know it's not a first degree equation like linear. So let me subtract a second time. Negative 3 minus negative 7 is 4, and you can do this on the calculator if that helps you uh, just kind of keep track of all the positives and negatives, but when you subtract a negative, it's like adding the opposite. Notice we're getting the same number each time on that second time we subtracted. That tells us it's a second degree equation. It's going to be a quadratic equation. See the second degree exponent there? So what we're going to do on this problem is we're going to write a system of equations. So we'll do this method where we're going to make, write three equations. I'm going to take these three points right here, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, if y is 1, okay, that's going to be 1 equals x is 0. So that's going to be a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. Okay. Then I'm going to take the second point, put 2 in for y and 1 in for x. And then I'm going to take the third point, I'm going to put 7 in for 
uh, y, and I'm going to put 2 in for x. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify this down a little bit. 0 squared is 0 times a is 0. b times 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. So we're just left with c is equal to 1. So that's interesting. So we already know what c is. Now for the second equation, 1 squared is 1 times a is a, plus b times 1 is b, plus c is equal to 2. Now remember we said c is equal to 1, so I'm going to replace this c with 1, and I'm going to subtract 1 uh, from both sides. So we've got a plus b equals 1. Okay, so that's interesting. Let's keep track of that equation. And then for the last one, 2 squared is 4 times a is 4a plus 2b plus c, which we said is 1, is equal to 7. Okay, so if I subtract 1, this is equal to 6. So we have 4a plus 2b is equal to 6. So now look what we have. We've got two variables, two equations. We want to solve that system, right? So let's say we want to eliminate the b's. I'm going to multiply this equation by negative 2. This way we'll have 2b and negative 2b. So if I do that to the entire equation, that's going to give us negative 2a minus 2b equals negative 2. And if we add straight down here, you can see we get 2a, the b's cancel. And if we divide by 2, a is equal to 2. Okay, so now we know a and c, we just need to find out what b is. So let's go ahead and put 2 back in for a here, or you can do this one here. Let's just do this one though. So this would be uh, 2 plus b is equal to 1. Subtract 2 from both sides. So b is equal to negative 1. So now we've got our a, b, and c. We can plug that in for a, b, and c here, and we have our equation. So let's see what that is. That's going to be y equals 2x squared minus 1x plus 1, and that's our quadratic equation. So let's look at another example. See if you can pause the video and do example number 5, and we'll go through it together. So if I was going to do this one, what I'm noticing here is that if I multiply negative 3 times 2, I get negative 6. And if I multiply negative 6 times 2, I get negative 12. And let me check over here. Negative 3 fourths times 2 is negative 3 halves, and negative 3 halves times 2 is negative 3. So I'm continuously multiplying by 2, and when you're multiplying by the same number each time, that tells you that it's an exponential function, and that base b is going to be equal to 2. So what we have is y equals a times 2 to the x power. Now the a represents the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. So this is uh, negative 3, so this is going to be y equals negative 3 times 2 to the x power, and you got it. Now, I always like to check, so let's say, for example, if I put 2 in, 2 squared is 4 times negative 3, yeah, that matches negative 12. Let's take a look at the last example. Okay, see if you can pause the video and do this last example and see what you get. So, if I was going to do this problem, I would use a method of finite differences. So, if I do negative 2 minus negative 4, that's 2, and 0 minus negative 2, that's 2, and 2 minus 0 is 2, and 4 minus 2 is 2. Notice that we're getting the same number on the first time that we subtracted. That tells us that it's a first degree equation, y equals mx plus b, a line, a linear equation. And you can see that the y's are going up by 2 as the x's are going up by 1. So 2 over 1 is a slope of 2. So this is y equals 2x plus b. Now, in this case, we don't know what our y-intercept is because we don't see where x equals 0 here on our table. So what we could do is we could just pick a point. Let's maybe say this point right here. If I put 0 in for y and I put negative 3 in for x, I can solve for this b value. So let's go ahead and do that. 6 and b look very similar. Negative 6 plus b. So if we add 6 to both sides, you can see that b, our y-intercept, is equal to 6. So if we take that 6 and we put it right in here for b, we've got our linear equation, y equals 2x plus 6. Again, if you want to check it, let's put in a point like negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, plus 6 is negative 4. It matches, so we know we've got a good equation here. So great job. If you want to see more examples or you want to get some more practice, I'll put a video right there that I did uh, going through more of these. Follow me over to that video, and we'll do some more examples together.